Hi, I'm Freddie. I want to explain about the game Ephemeris, which is an invention from Dedalion. Ephemeris is a game played with the solar system, the planets, the sun and the moon, against the backdrop of stars called the Zodiac. It's a strategy game for two to four players, it's co-total innovation, and um, so the way you play is with this fourfold board, and the planets are set up in groups. We have the four outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, and we've colored those blue. The other group is the inner planets, Mars, Venus, Mercury, and the moon and the sun. So we have a little silver moon and the golden sun. And each planet has a symbol which comes from what from the ephemeris, which is a little table of uh, planetary positions. You can check any position of any planet um, through any day of the year, from back, dating back from 1860 forward into the far future, 2000, 3000. Anyway, I love those symbols. But the names are written on the planets as well. And the positions that you have to start up every game with are marked on the board. And on the board are the 12 signs of the zodiac, um, from Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, all the way through to Pisces. And the, the, the nice little feature on the board is um, you can see which is the brightest star in each of those constellations. Right, so for each planet we have cards. Um, we have a pack of, pack of planet, sun and moon cards. We have a packet, a, pla a, a pack of zodiac cards uh, to match the board. Um, so at each start of the game, each player is dealt five planet cards. That includes sun and moon. So you don't know what each other have got. You keep them secret. So you've got your five planets that relate to the five of the pieces on the board. You are also de dealt five zodiac cards. Here we have Taurus, go this way, Taurus, Leo, um, let me have a look because it's all back to front. Uh, we have Aries, Taurus, Leo, Cancer, Gemini. Those are our, these are the zodiacs that I've been dealt and these are my planets that I've been dealt. And what I've got to do is try to put one of these planets in each of the signs on the board. And you can move, move any piece on the board um, and your object is to win and be the first to place your planets into your signs. Um, that's the game for two players, it's a strategy game. You can play it with four players, it gets a little bit more complicated with four because three or four people, because you can, uh, obviously everybody can move any of the pieces, nobody owns the pieces. Whatever you have in your hand, it doesn't mean you can't move the other pieces. And the main strategy of the game comes by this. These blue, the outer pieces, they're slow moving planets because they're so far out. They cannot move past uh, the inner planets or the moon or sun. So those blue ones can be blocked at any time by the moon, sun or a red piece. The inner planets can overtake each other, they can't overtake the moon or sun. But that's a kind of blocking strategy that the Sun and Moon have. If you move the Moon to Jupiter, you, nobody could move Jupiter, for instance, because nothing can go past the Moon. Not even the Sun in this game can go past the Moon, because the Moon is the fastest. It moves around in 28 days, whereas the Sun takes a, a year to go past, as it were. Um, so this is the basic strategy of the game. It gets quite um, challenging. Um, and I was saying, if you play with three or four, or more than two players, um, we bring a poor old Pluto into the play. Um, you each get a Pluto card. This is a wild card, it can be played at any time, and it gives you an extra go. So on each turn, um, in both games, a player can move any piece on the board through as many signs as you wish. If you're trying to get, say, Let's see, we've got Aries here and we've got Venus, right. So Venus is, starts here, it's got to get all the way around to Aries 
clockwise. The furthest it can move at the moment is Sagittarius because this cannot overtake the moon or the sun. I don't know whether you can see those. But, um, so if anybody wants the other player if he has Venus, he will have to decide to move the moon first. The sun can't overtake the moon. So he may move the moon to Neptune. This means Neptune can't move. He may have that card. So it's all a little bit of strategy. Um, that's, that's the game, Femoris. And when you finish, when you get your five cards in, you shout Femoris, and you have to prove your cards. Um, second game in the box, much more of a family game, is played with a pack of quiz cards. We have, uh, there's 172 quiz questions, all based on the solar system, from which planets have moons, uh, rocket missions, the um, ISS base station, all kinds of really good questions. Uh, a lot of the kids might know, it's very good to play with young kids with their parents and um, they can prove how much they know and how little their parents know about the solar system. But everybody learns something. So yeah, it's a really good, great game. I'm very, very proud to have invented it with my co-inventor, my, co my sister. Um, both of us are fairly starstruck. So enjoy the game. And if you get stuck, look us up and we will be very pleased to help any of the rules that you may not quite understand. Cheers.